There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, aboran, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium. What we did in the last video, and make sure to watch the last video before you watch this video. So the link for the last video is right here. Can't really, so you don't really get much out of this video if you don't watch the last video. So in the last video, we talked about gravimetric analysis. And gravimetric analysis was the idea of finding the chemical composition of different substances. We try to find out how much sulfur is actually in a fertilizer. Right? So the chemical composition. So we're not try trying to find out what's inside, but more, more specifically, we're trying to find out how much is inside. And we said that how much is inside is a form of quantitative analysis. Quantitative analysis means we're dealing with numbers, whereas qualitative analysis would just mean we're trying to find out what ions are inside, not how many, whereas quantitative means we're trying to find out how many, how much grams there are inside. But the problem when it comes to any experiment, especially something like gravimetric analysis, is there can always be mistakes, either in the experimental design or in following the experimental procedures, right? So either there might be a design problem, you might not choose the right equipment, or it could be just errors that come when it comes to any experiment. And what we do in this video is we're trying to find out how we can, first of all, identify possible flaws in our experimental design and procedure, and how we can try to correct them to make sure there's li as little problem as possible. So the actual dot point says, analyze information to evaluate the reliability of results of the above investigation and to propose solutions to problems encountered in the procedure. Right? So we have to figure out what could there, what issues could there be in terms of reliability and accuracy, we'll cover both of those, and how can we overcome those? What can we do that we can not make that happen more or less? So the actual f four things that I've mentioned. First was the possibility of simply making mistakes. So you might do the experiment once and you might get, let's say, the actual result should have been something like 0 0.28 grams. We did the whole experiment, and for whatever reason, even though you had everything correct, you got maybe 0 0.1 gram, right? So that experiment, that result is not correct. What could we do to overcome that possibility of making that mistake? Well, what we can do is we can do more of the actual experiment. We can do we can repeat the experiment, so repetition. Repetition always improves reliability. So for example, let's say we have the first one we get 0 0.12, then we do it four more times and we get 0 0.29 grams, 0. I should write it here, 0 0.27 grams, 0 0.26 grams, and 0 0.3 grams, right? So we have these five results. We can really see the first result, 0 0.12 grams, is so far away from the other ones that it's probably not correct. So we can just ignore that one. And what we do next is we just take the average out of those four. So in this case, 0 0.26, 0 0.29, 0 0.27, and 0 0.30. I've chosen those numbers for a reason because the average of those four, you would get 0 0.28 grams. So then you could say, okay, well, the actual results would be about 0 0.28 grams. And then you'd be more, much more uh, accurate with your results. So one possibility when it comes to simply make mistakes is just increasing the amount you do it, have more repetitions of the experiment, that increases reliability. Second possible mistake is using the incorrect balance. What I mean by that, this is your electronic balance. You simply put something on top of the electronic balance and you get a easy to read measurement. Whereas your beam balance, beam balances are the ones which you know you have to read everything yourself. You only see these, you know, the scale and you have to try to figure out what's the actual weight. And these beam balances, they can be, uh, maybe you can get accurate inaccuracy in terms of measurement and reading off the actual scale. So ideally, if you use a beam balance, if you can, if you want to improve your reliability, and your accuracy, use an electronic balance instead. That'd be another example of what could go wrong and how you can overcome that problem. Now, when it comes to the filter paper, so the filter paper you're using might not be fine enough. What I mean by fine enough is if you, for example, have the filter paper, and I just drew these gray dots here. What I mean by these gray dots is this, there might be the openings, might be a bit too big, right? So I'm just gonna gray, draw a couple more gray dots. So these gray dots might be a bit too big. There might be small holes there, which are too big for, for it to really work. And what that means is if you have that precipitate, let me just draw the precipitate in, let's say, 
got precipitating green. They might be able to fit through the holes and then they would sort of come out the other side and we wouldn't be able to get reliable results or accurate results. So how could we improve that? Well, we could use analytical grade filter paper. This is a very powerful filter paper, very fine filter paper. And the holes are very small. So if, for example, we put, let's say, in a normal filter paper or a not so good filter paper, if we put our sort of solution with the precipitate inside, what will happen is your solution will go through. So, you know, your filtrate will go through. That's expected, but so will some of your, some might get stuck, some of your precipitate, but some precipitate might be able to fit through those holes and will be in your solution. And that's not ideal. Whereas if we use that analytical grade filter paper, what will happen if we put that solution through that filter paper is first of all, the solution itself will be inside, which is good. And your precipitate will get stuck because it can't fit through the holes and we can collect it on top here. So that's all good. All right, so by using a more fine filter paper, we can try to avoid the mistake of letting some of the precipitate go into the filtrate and thereby getting inaccurate results. Also, sometimes you might get other solids stuck in with your precipitate. What I mean by that, let's say this is our filtrate, our filter tunnel. We've got a filter paper here and the gray ones are our precipitate. So that's what we wanted. The precipitate we want to collect. But let's say that for whatever reason, there might be something else stuck there as well from the whole experiment. These are our unwanted solids. They might somehow manage to get stuck there. So what we can do is we can simply get a water bottle. It's like a, a water dropper. Water dropper. And drop some water into this solution here. And by doing this, we're going to dissolve it all again. And the chance of those, green, those yellow ones, which are the unwanted ones, going into our solution would have been enhanced. Right. So by using a water dropper, we can make sure that the unwanted solids go into solution and what remains is our wanted precipitate. That's another way we can try to overcome a possibility of making a mistake or a, improving our accuracy. So I'll go over the four steps that I mentioned because the dot point again says analyze information to evaluate the reliability of the results of the above investigation and to propose solutions to problems encountered in the procedure. So with the you know, investigation that we did in the last video, even though we tried as best as we can to obviously make it as accurate as possible, overall, we've followed a decent procedure, but there will still be some ways we can improve that procedure, making it more reliable. One way would be to repeat the experiment. In the one we made the last time, last video, we only did it once. If we repeat it, we'll get more, more reliable results because the more we do it, the more reliable they are. And last week we actually used the electronic balance, but if we didn't, if we, for example, used the beam balance, we could have used an electronic balance simply to give it a more sort of accurate reading because it's easier to read it off the, you know, these digit numbers than it would be to read it off a scale. Also, if we used the faults, the, the wrong type of filter paper, if it's not fine enough, that would mean that some of our precipitate would go inside the solution and that would be bad because our results would be unreliable. If we have a grade an analytical grade filter paper, which is a very fine paper, we can make sure we trap all of the precipitate. And if we have solids which might get stuck, so unwanted solids, which for whatever reason might be stuck with our precipitate, these yellow ones are unwanted ones, what we could do is we could simply use water to pour, to dissolve things again, or to sort of enhance the, the them squeezing through. And if we do that, the chance of the yellow ones, the unwanted ones going into solution, and the precipitate, the gray one staying behind, has increased. And thereby, we make sure that our precipitate is pure sort of barium sulfate and not anything else mixed with it. And so these are four examples of how you could try to, how, what could go wrong and how you could try to overcome that problem. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.